January 3rd, 2022, first project of the year. I got commissioned to build a dining room table for my wife's nephew and his family. The table was made with bird's eye maple that also had some spalting, and the legs were metallic. So I started by ripping down the boards to a smaller width in order to be able to face plane these boards on my jointer. That, by the way, face plane was physically pretty demanding. By the way, one consequence of running a, uh, a jointer to do face jointing or even a planer that'll happen tomorrow is that you have to empty the dust collection bin pretty often. This thing's already full and I emptied it just a couple of days ago. The last operation of day one was to edge joint each of the five boards. A couple of passes did the trick. Then the next day, I got out my DeWalt planer and cleaned up the second face of each board. Yeah, so I emptied the uh, canister, the dust collection canister yesterday, but I noticed that chips are starting to get into the dust collection main, the, the vacuum, the main bag. So that means that this guy is full. Now let's go take a look. Oh yeah, it's full. Off to the trash can. The final step in the milling process was back at the table saw as I ripped each board the final width. Notice that I'm using a feather board to keep everything nice and tight against the rib fence. Next, I went to the miter saw and cut each board to rough length. Final length will be cut later once all the boards are glued up together. I took out a couple of uh, boards, uh, plywood boards, so that I would have a bit of a wider uh, workbench to work with. Uh, and I've laid out my planks 
uh, in the order that I'm pretty sure I'm going to use for the final glue up. I'm not happy with the seams between the different boards, so I'm going to go back to the to the um, jointer and get that fixed because these joints aren't very tight as is. Uh, table right now is standing in its current shape at about 36 and and 3 8 so it'll probably finish around 36 inches wide in the end, which is actually quite nice. It's quite, and it's 86 inches long, but I'll have to trim that once the final glue up is done. Looking really nice. This is beautiful wood. Absolutely beautiful wood. And I love the spalting and I love the bird's eye pattern, which you can't see off camera, but uh, it's, it's nice. It really is nice. All right, let's get back to work. If you've watched some of my other videos, you'll know that I like to use biscuits when I do a tabletop glue up like this. Uh, I like them not so much for the added strength. I know there's a lot of debate about that, but mostly because they really better align boards. Now, once the biscuits were cut, I cleaned up the work surface, added a painter's cover on my workbench, and proceeded with the glue up. The painter's cover was there to catch any excess glue that could and actually did fall. Alright, first glue up is done, so I'm going to take my time with this one. Um, instead of trying to glue all five boards together all at once, I'm going to take it you know, step by step, glue these two boards, I'll let this cure, I'll come back later tonight <clears throat> and I'll do the other two, and then tomorrow what I will do is I will glue everything together with the middle piece. Um, this way, what I'm what I'm getting is I'm getting a chance to make sure that everything is flush and I'm really happy with the results. I use calls on the ends but honestly I don't really think I needed it. It's just more as a precaution because if I just pass my hand over the seams it's, it's I can all barely feel it. So that means like the glue up is done really really well. Alright, that's it for today. I'll come back tonight for the other glue up and tomorrow morning we'll glue this whole thing together. It's coming together really nice. I got a haircut since the last time. Alright, it's been a couple of days since the last time I, uh, I did the video. So what has happened since then? Well, I finished the glue up. I have five panels, or five boards that are glued together, and the glue up actually turned out really nice. The four boards that are on the edge, so these two and these two are exactly seven and a half inches wide and the one in the middle is six inches wide. And the reason why this one is smaller is really the wood itself. I wanted to have it the exact same width but I noticed that there were some defects in the wood that would not work with the table and I had to get a narrower board. It's going to look good, I'm not worried about that. This is actually the underside. What I'm doing now is I'm cutting some half inch plywood to add and make this table even beefier. Um, this is a very heavy table as is, but the customer has asked me to 
uh, add a little bit more backing. So I'm going to, I'm cutting this uh, half inch plywood. I've got two um, sections cut. I'm going to focus on the middle section after. Now in order to cut this plywood, I bought myself a new toy. I bought myself a guide system from Bora. And it also comes with a um, plate for my circular saw, which is down there. I'm actually using the guide uh, from the Bora system to uh, basically give me a line as to where I need to glue this, uh, this panel. Uh, I know that I'm going to be cutting this end and that the other end flush at some point in time. Uh, and in order to make sure that I've got a square line to work with, I'm using the Bora system. It's got a, a straight edge system itself to be able to draw that line. That's done. Next up, I'm going to do the same thing for the other panel. I'm going to glue this up, put a couple of screws to hold it in place, and then I'll focus on the middle section probably tomorrow. All right? A couple of days later, my wife's nephew showed up to give me a hand. And at this point, this table needs to be turned a couple of times, and I can't do that on my own anymore, so his help was greatly appreciated. We started our day by trimming the excess plywood on the underside with my router and a flush, a flush trim bit. Then we used the Bora system and my circular saw to square off each of the short ends. Next we flip the table to expose the underside in order to install the metallic legs. After very careful measuring, we just use screws that are supplied by the leg manufacturer to secure the legs. And at this point, the table can be flipped once more onto its legs, and that's it. It's going to stay upright from now on. I hate my So last time, uh, this was a couple of days ago, uh, my wife's nephew was here. We put the table, or we put the legs on the table, flipped it upside down, and then we started making the edging with uh, miters. Um, and one thing that I knew we were gonna have issues with is how do we cut proper uh, splines to make the joints, the corner joints, the miters themselves a lot stronger. So I checked a couple of videos on YouTube and I found a number of designs that I incorporated into this little sled. Uh, it goes over my table saw fence and this caddy, this little jig will allow me to put in two pieces um, of a joint so that I can cut proper spline, uh, the proper splines. Now I did a test. If you look on my workbench, there is a uh, test that I ran. So I've got some walnut splines uh, inside of, I don't even remember, I think this is pine. It might actually be hemlock, I'm not sure anymore. Um, no glue right now, but uh, if I try to take this apart, and I'll show you that, uh, I'll put the camera on the tripod. Already without any glue, this is a really strong joint. So I think this is going to work. This is going to do the trick. Um, yeah, next step for me is to cut all four edges on the table. So I've got all the different pieces necessary to do that. 
And then once I've got my edging, I'll cut some biscuits on the side to line up the edging properly with the table itself. And finally, we're going to cut the splines and get all that glued up and squared away. Lots going on today, which is good. Let me show you the test. So again, there's no glue in this joint. All right, all there is are the splines. I mean, without any glue, this is, it takes a lot just to remove all this. So this is gonna work, this is gonna be great. Positive, very positive. Now that I'm comfortable with how I'm going to cut the splines, I use my miter saw to cut each of the edges to final length. I also cut biscuits in each of the edges. And corresponding biscuit holes in the sides of the table. Alright, time to use my sled to cut the splines. Uh, you'll notice that I have one long edge and one short edge clamped in my jig. I set my fence to three quarters of an inch and made the cut. Surprisingly, uh, this cut was pretty tough on my blade. You'll see some smoke come out here. Now my plan was to flip both edges for the bottom cut. So basically I placed the long edge where the short edge was for the first cut and vice versa. Now I realized that my dust collector, my dust filter was in the way. So I had to unhook one of the sides temporarily in order to make the cut. Not a big deal, just a, you know, it's part of realities of life, I guess. Thank God I've got a high ceiling in my shop. The long edge is just over seven feet long. Even at 45 degrees, it needs a lot of headroom. Time to glue up the edges. I decided to glue up one long edge at a time. That allowed me to align the edge properly and to clamp it down securely. Now, I like to take my time when I do these glue ups. I end up getting much better results. Also, this is one of those moments where I can't help but hear Norm Abrams' voice. You never have enough clamps. I ended up using almost all my clamps, including, you'll see this a little later, I had to use a double F clamp contraption in a couple of cases. I, was, I ran out of all my long clamps. I think I've got five clamps left on my board. <sighs> Alright, I'm going to let this cook overnight. I'll be back in the morning. Do the other side, do the other two sides. I'm going to take it one step at a time. It's, uh, I don't want to rush it. I want to get this right. Whew! When it came time to glue up the short edges, I decided to do both at the same time. The trick here was to use my splines as a temporary measure to line up the short and long edges together. Um, I also used a combination of a long pipe clamp with a shorter one to clamp this glue up down. I used uh, two of those in order to uh, 
to get both sides clamped down. The next day, I used my flush trim pull saw to cut the excess material on my splines. I used walnut, by the way, for this point. Just beautiful. beautiful. This morning, I took some time and gave uh, really thorough sanding all over the place using 80 grit sandpaper. That's still what's in the um, orbital uh, sander right now. And just now what I've done is I've uh, covered off all the little gaps that are in whatever joints. Um, and to do so, what I did is I got all the dust that was at the bottom of my dust collector and mixed it with some glue to make this type of putty. And that's what I've been using to cover up those holes. I'm going to let everything dry for at least an hour, if not more. And then I'll come back later and give it another final sanding. So I'll go through all my grits at that point. 80, uh, 120, 150, I believe, and then 220. So I've got four different grits to go through. This table is looking absolutely awesome. I just want to make it look even better before I start putting the finish. Finally, after almost three weeks of work, this table is ready for a finish. I put on three coats of a semi-gloss floor finish from Saman with a light sanding with 220 grit sandpaper between each coat. No stain for this project, and my wife's nephew did not want to hide the maple's natural beauty. I think he made the right choice. Thanks for watching, folks. Click like if you enjoyed this. Leave a comment. Love to hear from you. Take care.